and whatnot. For you to be able to do all these projects, you need resources. Mm. And uh, government has only two uh, places to get money, mm. through taxation uh, and, in some extent, debt. Mm. So William Ruto gets into office and he's, uh, he campaigned on the platform of he will do everything in his power to minimize on debt, external debt, mm. so that we maximize on on-source revenue collection within the country. So that we, our obligations are not entirely to, you know, other forces, mm. but it's more of an internal issue. But now, the tragedy we are in, I feel like the thinking up there is good, but in the middle, people mm. are not getting it right. They are making it look like uh, the primary role of this government is to collect taxes. And that's a wrong perception. Mm -hmm. If you ask me, I think the government should be an enabler for economic growth, for people to be able to prosper. But you see, you see, the reason why even Kenyans are resisting is because some of the attitude being manifested, even when you are articulating uh, the issue of uh, people's tax obligation, is, is not perceived from, you know, like the Mwanainchi point of view. Mm -hmm. It's perceived as this person is hell-bent to make you mark. You must pay taxes. Mm -hmm. And the problem, again, the other tragedy is, unlike in the period in the regime of Kibaki, mm -hmm. Kenyans are not seeing the goodwill they need for them to respond to. Because you remember, for Kibaki to be able to expand on his tax uh, collection, one of the things they did was the introduction of the austerity measures. Mm -hmm. Remember, we were used to government officials driving in big guzzlers. Mm -hmm. So one of the things Kibaki did to show goodwill to the taxpayer was introduce austerity measures and say, for example, let's now use Passat. Probably they are more economical in terms of uh, fuel consumption. So that we reduce on the cost in terms of expenditure as government and maximize on the expenditure to areas that ideally would spur economic growth in the country. We are not seeing that. And I feel like uh, those are some of the measures the president ought to actually be seized off in as much as people have branded him Zakayo and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It's not out of bad faith. I feel... And I hear many Kenyans, even on talk shows and TV, radio, they are saying we, are not, we have no problem in paying taxes. But we have a problem on how, first of all, our taxes are being used. Mm -hmm. For example, look at even just the budget allocations that have been made. When you see huge sums going towards individual offices, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, this office is going to receive X billion of shillings, this amount of money is going to, you know, purchasing cars for this person, mm -hmm. those are now the things frustrating the taxpayer. So it's like... If this one, we, if we are at a place where we are prioritizing these extras, mm. then it doesn't mean that we actually need the amount of money we are talking about. But if, we, if government's attitude shifts and people begin to show that we are actually even cutting on expenditures within the structures of government so that we are accommodative to the future we are trying to build towards, then Kenyans will embrace. I think also there are gaps that need to actually be addressed. And these gaps also involve the people, the citizen. For example, how many of us know at what stage does the budget-making process begin? Mm. And what's our contribution towards that process? Or are we just reactive when there's a budget policy statement presented in Parliament? Because remember, even the finance bill responds to the propositions in the budget policy statement, mm. which sometimes, if you look at the budget deficit in Kenya, it keeps going up. Mm. And if you look at the targets that KRA gives, in terms of, uh, you know, tax uh, collection, we never hit those targets. Yet, our projection, budget projections keep going up. We're increasing from, uh, I think right now we are at four point something trillion. Mm. We are giving an additional projection of over 400 billion on top of uh, last year's estimates. And probably will not even hit the mark because we always range maybe somewhere almost approaching three trillion. Mm. So what do we do with this deficit? It means it keeps accumulating because what that does is that, Mark, when you're seated in your office, you know, for example, the allocation in my ministry is supposed to be X million mm. or X yeah. billion. So you plan with that in mind, not knowing that probably you don't even have capacity to finance that. Mm. So there is also the question of living within our means. It's, it's a discussion we need to have as a country and ask ourselves, is it necessary? for us to actually be operating with huge budget estimates when we know our reality? Mm. Or can we be progressive? And I think those are some of the, 
the, the steps that the Kibaki regime took that made sense because they were also very careful not to appear like you're exploiting Kenyans. Mm. If anything, government needs to actually appear like it's cushioning Kenya from the tax burden yeah. so that now you motivate more people to actually be part of the programs. But now when it appears like consistently the efforts being made, and sometimes I feel like the experts around this budget conversation are politically naive. You know, they're not doing any justice to the government of the day because even how they're packaging the whole thing is like you're triggering, you're trying to provoke yeah. the common Mwanainchi. And remember, uh, the way we are discussing the village, and it's, it's just uh, fascinating how this discussion has evolved from yeah. Mama from Wanjiku to now Mamamboga now to a villager yeah. I don't know what next we will be called <laughs> but these individuals to, 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 we, we have already been called the ground the ground yes <laughs> so this ground because I have walked that path mm. uh, campaigning and talking to Kenyans in the last election and I can tell you Kenyans are very good people mm. but they can also be bad when they are provoked yeah. so the best is for us to actually think that the bottom line must be the common one how are we cushioning them let me give you an example, like the debate Quickly, around because the, we need to get yeah, Joseph the debate, the like around the debate around the the levy on bread. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a basic commodity. That's something that families take pride in. When you see your father walk home yes. with a with a loaf, mm. you you get excited. It, it it makes you feel like you're actually part of uh, what is on the table. Yeah. But now, when you start frustrating those small small things, what are you trying to communicate?